Professor Pollo. Dr. Touré, WRC delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to address you as a scientist and as a citizen of the world. I understand that you have come to Geneva from more than 150 of the ITU's member states. You are here to do an important job, an essential one, for nearly all of humanity in today's world. You are charged to do your utmost to accommodate the wide variety of competing interests of all users of the radio frequency spectrum and of available orbits for Earth satellites, and these things for the betterment of all. This is surely not an easy task. Most people give very little thought to the complicated issues that you face. Why should they, since for most of us, most of the time, the technologies that depend on these limited resources just seem to work. But I know, and each one of you knows much more directly, that much background work and many long negotiations are often necessary in order to make everything fit together and work in harmony. Dr. Touré asked me to offer a few words about my vision of the future of radio communication. Perhaps it might make your tasks here easier if I could tell you about some new research at the frontiers of physics that would open up a new spectral window or perhaps an entirely new technique for telecommunications. Maybe you've heard about gravitational waves or dark energy or the Higgs particle being sought in the CERN laboratory just a few kilometers from here. These are discoveries or potential discoveries in the case of the Higgs particle that have fundamentally changed or extended our understanding of nature's laws, or might do so in the near future. Alas, I can offer you no help from this court. None of these discoveries is likely to materially affect any issues that would come before the ITU or future World Radio Communication Conferences, at least not for many decades to come. <coughs> This is because our fundamental understanding of electromagnetism is already in a mature state. Maxwell's equations, after all, have been thoroughly tested now for 150 years. And in principle, they tell us everything we need to know in order to exploit the wonders of telecommunications at the speed of light. Our understanding of these laws of nature, including what they tell us is possible and not possible, is not likely to change, even in the more distant future. But, of course, we can still develop new and improved ways of generating, controlling, and detecting electromagnetic radiation, as well as clever new ways of effectively sharing the spectral resources that we have. Such advances as these will surely continue, and perhaps they will even increase. The fundamental science may be mature, but technology is able to exploit and uh, build on electromagnetic phenomena are still rapidly developing. It's interesting to comment in passing on some fundamental differences between the bounded radio frequency spectrum and the bounds, for example, on accessible fossil fuels. Limitations of the radio spectrum are a result of fundamental laws of nature. Every nation on Earth, and indeed every person on Earth, has access, in principle, to the same spectrum as everyone else. The amount of accessible oil, on the other hand, depends in a much more complicated way on how the Earth formed and evolved over time, and fossil fuels are not evenly distributed over the Earth, and they are expendable. When it's gone, there's none left. The electromagnetic spectrum, on the other hand, will always be there, whether or not we humans are around here to enjoy using it. Moreover, the spectrum can be shared by many users simultaneously, and shared use can be especially effective if adequate planning is done in advance. That planning, of course, is an essential part of your assignments here. 
future technologies will surely make even better uses of wireless communication than we do today. I foresee plenty of scope for contributions from new technologies, for example, to the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. Information and communication technologies have much to offer for the betterment of the human condition everywhere, and perhaps especially so in the developing world. It's extremely important to continue seeking the best efficiencies in the use of the spectrum. I wish you every success in your task of creating wise and fair guidelines for regulators and policymakers who must allocate the limited resources in the very best interests of all mankind. Thank you so much for your attention and have a good conference. Joe, I would like to see you to stay. I would like to thank you very much for your very enlightening and visionary words. Professor Taylor, in recognition of your outstanding contribution to the research in the field of radio communication, the International Telecommunication Union is pleased to honor you with its gold medal and certificate in recognition.